people going to their daily work, often rushing against time. Nine out of ten secretly hope that the near future, perhaps that very day, will give them a break, bring them the stroke of luck they've always wanted. Hence the newspaper item, not one in a hundred will overlook, is the horoscope. Displayed for all to see is what's in store for that day. For thousands of years, astrologers have thought that everybody's future is written in the stars. Millions more than half believe it, so hardly any national newspaper dare go to press nowadays without the horoscope feature. No horoscope, and circulation would suffer. That is something which the business brains of the popular press thoroughly understand. Office life, factory life, any ordinary life is often dull except for the few at the top. The rest live on hope. Wish I could get old Brown's job. There are private cares. Why doesn't he propose to me? What's he thinking? I wonder if I'll win the pools. And her aspirations. Shan't I ever get a fur coat? And his plans? Suppose there's another war. Now what's her trouble? Wonder if he suspects anything. Why do so many millions at least half believe in astrology? Basically it's because modern life is often drab and lived at a killing pace. There's little chance to save for old age. We're taxed up to the hilt. Income tax, purchase tax, entertainment tax. As fast as we earn it, they seem to take it away. And superstition always flourishes in an age of insecurity. Ballistic missiles, H-bombs, Cold War, revolution and rioting in many parts of the world. What an age it is. When in all history have so many felt insecure? Isn't it only natural that everyone wants to know how it's all going to turn out? Labour exchanges in some parts of the country are again coping with unemployed. If only they knew their future. London's planetarium is a sign of the times. For though visitors will learn nothing there of astrology, but only of the science of astronomy, they see, ingeniously projected, pictures of the stars in all they wonder. Many people don't know the difference between what they see here and the signs of the zodiac they read of in the press. In olden times, men saw the heavenly patterns in animal likeness. Aries the ram is the form of the night sky in spring. Leo the lion appears in August. Perhaps we've got a new one here, Pathy the cockerel. Astrologers have their own federation. Dr. Tucker, the president, was delving into the events of the coming year when filmed by Pathy News. And what an eventful year we're going to have indeed. The good doctor spilled a few astrological beans when interviewed for Pathy News. And now this newsreel lets you into some of the secrets the stars foretell. Dr. Tucker, how do you arrive at these conclusions? Well, it's perfectly simple, really. This is a, a basic horoscope of a person. It contains all the birth configurations. And uh, I simply look at an ephemeris for 1959 and pick out a major configuration likely to apply to this person. You understand that, don't you? Frankly, no. But what are the prospects for 1959? Well, there will be no war, you'd be pleased to hear. Uh, well, there will be world tension during uh, April and May. Um, but that can be handled. Economically, uh, the situation will be difficult between May and August. Uh, consequently, I think Mr Macmillan should uh, not uh, consider going to the country before September. Uh, the Queen's horoscope uh, shows that uh, she will have to make an, an important decision concerning Princess Margaret's marriage uh, in May, the marriage itself being fixed for September 17th. Pressmen were agog when our reporter emerged. Mr. Simon, do you think there's anything in astrology? I can't make up my mind. Let's ask the great Nostra Giza. Hey, what do you think of the prospects for 1959? Happy? No. Prosperous? Well, if you don't smoke, eat or drink, maybe you'd save ten bob at the end of the year. And then the income tax people take that. Well, that's a nice prospect, I must say. Well, you did ask. <laughs> 